Did you know that an estimated 180 people worldwide suffer from some form of visual disability? India has 15 million people who are completely blind. In fact, India shares a disproportionate burden of people who are visually disabled due to uncorrected refractive error. Do you know what uncorrected refractive error means? It means people need these, but they don't have them. How many people here in the audience have specs or contacts or something? Yeah, I'm guessing more than half, right? So when people don't have this sort of corrective eyewear, they do badly in school, they lose out on educational opportunities, and their quality of life really goes down. 80% of these people <coughs> do not need to be blind at all. And there's a huge number of organizations worldwide dedicated to the cause of eradicating preventable blindness. The LV Prasad Eye Institute in Hyderabad is one such organization, and I've had the privilege of working there for the past two years. It was founded by Dr. G. N. Rao with a vision to provide world-class eye care to those who cannot afford it or cannot access it. And we're really proud of the fact that over the past 28 years, we've treated almost 20 million people, more than half of them at absolutely no cost. There are some amazing clinicians and doctors at LV Prasad Eye Institute, and two of them, Dr. Sarwan and Dr. Vipin, met Professor Ramesh Raskar, who's a professor at MIT Media Lab. And they envisioned a collaboration between the two institutions. You see, if we leverage MIT's technology capability and LV Prasad Eye Institute's public health delivery models, we can really go faster in achieving this goal of ending preventable blindness. So this led to the formation of a dedicated innovation space within the hospital, where you could have doctors and engineers work together to really innovate and make the next generation of uh, devices in this goal. Our motto is all ideas welcome. And this has led to the proliferation of a huge number of extremely innovative, some extremely simple ideas to really achieve this grand challenge. I've been leading this initiative for the past two years, and I'm gonna to talk to you about a few of our projects that have had huge impact. This is Viru. He's been an optometrist at LV Prasad for the past eight years. And this is the device he uses every day to prescribe his patients with corrective glasses. It's called a foropter. It's really expensive, and it's extremely complicated to use. So he came to us with a simple idea. He said, you know what? In our rural health screening camps or our public health programs, the people who are on ground, who are actually looking at the patients, they're not highly skilled or highly trained, not even highly educated. They need to skin a huge number of people in a short amount of time. They cannot use something like a foropter over there. He said, instead, can we build a simpler version of this device? He said, we'll make a device that has two lenses where you can move them. We put a target at a distance and tell the patient to look through this and move the lenses till he can or her, she can see the target clearly. Then just by knowing the distance between the lenses, we can estimate their refractive error. This is simple optics. In addition, the device should be really, really cheap, easy to manufacture, easy to transport, and extremely easy to use. So this is what we came up with. It's made of paper. You assemble it just by folding, like origami, like these things over here. And uh, you get two tubes, you insert one tube into the other, and you tell the patient to look through it like a telescope. We've tested on hundreds of patients, both in clinics in the city and clinics in villages, and we've got excellent results. We've even got meaningful data from elderly people like this, or people who may not be very highly educated, they may not be able to understand, but they can surely understand how to use a device as simple as this. We've got a lot of meaningful data and we're collecting more to prove the efficacy of this instrument. And what about the cost? It costs less than 30 rupees. And this is just a conservative estimate because those two lenses, they're actually reusable. So what we have is a disposable, environmentally friendly solution, which is exactly what you need for field work. We're also making the designs open source so that anyone anywhere in the world can print this out and build their own. It's, it's that simple, it's just folding paper, right? And this is exactly the sort of thinking that is required to scale such simple ideas globally so that everyone can benefit from them. Okay, this is Dr. Prem Nandini. Now she is interested in looking at visual fields in infants. Now what is your visual field? It's the periphery of everything that you can see, right? Why do you want to look at this? It actually tells you about the health of your entire visual pathway right till your brain. And there are a lot of diseases that affect this. They start, they manifest themselves by affecting a visual field. Some of these diseases can be present from birth. And if they're not detected in time, they can uh, result in the person going through life completely blind. This is the sort of effect they have on your visual field. You see the image on the top left, 
That's what a healthy person would see. And you see how different diseases rob you of different sections of your visual field. This is the device that's used in a clinic right now. Okay, the patient would, they would rest their chin on the chin rest and uh, they would get visual stimuli across that dome shaped object. When they see something, they would click a button and that would give us a map like this. A clinician would be able to look at this map and diagnose the extent of some condition. Now, you cannot do something like this for little babies. What they instead do is they take a bright object like a toy or something and bring it from the corner of their field and look at their response. Good. But what they would really need is something like that map that I showed you. So we brainstormed with Dr. Prem Nandini and we came up with this. So I'm just going to show you how this device works. So a little child is made comfortable by putting it underneath the dome. We have a camera on top of the dome which monitors the child. Uh, it's a night vision camera because this is all done in the dark. And uh, once the child is happily in place, and they do, they're really happy to be in this instrument, uh, we show them uh, visual stimuli all across their field. And then we note their response. Right? So this is what the clinician would see. This video has been sped up. You see on the right, on the left, we have the live feed of the child. And on the right, those red dots show you how the visual stimulus is coming from the periphery to the center. Once this sort of test is complete, we get the map that we need. Now this sort of data from children is unprecedented. There's no device in the world that actually gives you this sort of data on babies. And not just babies, it can be used on people who have the mental age of a child, like people who've suffered brain damage, people who cannot otherwise respond, people who are mentally challenged, even extremely old people who may not be able to understand complex instructions, right? We want this to be a standard of care for children who've been born. It should be a standard vision test. And once this is complete, we are sure that it's going to bring smiles to the whole family. All right, this is Dr. Tarjani. She is in the oculoplasty and oculuristry departments at LV Prasad. What does this department do? They do a lot of this. These are prosthetic eyes which are used for patients who have lost their eye and have had it surgically removed. Now what you need to understand about prosthetic eyes is that thing I showed you is just the outside. You see when the eyeball is removed, the cavity that remains is filled with a surgical implant which is like a ball, right? And this thing sits on the outside. Now this 16 year old boy had a problem. That prosthetic eye was not fitting in place. When a CT scan was done of him, you see that ball has actually shifted inside his skull. Now, what Dr. Tarjani would have to do is corrective surgery to bring, to push that ball back up where it belongs. She came to us with this problem and said, you know what, you guys do a lot of 3D printing. Can you 3D print me an exact replica of this boy's skull so I can make the custom implant that's required for him and I'll be dead sure that when I surgically implant it, it's going to fit perfectly. We said, let's do it. We uh, could reconstruct the boy's skull from the CT scan chop out the portion we needed, <clears throat> and gave her a 3D print. It's an exact replica of the boy's skull. And using it, she was able to fabricate the secondary implant that was needed, implanted it back, and look. The prosthetic eye fits perfectly. And uh, <clears throat> this was a first at the hospital, actually. So <clears throat> at this point, <clears throat> we got really bold. We were like, now we can do anything. So she threw at us an even bigger challenge. Now this lady had lost she had cancer in her right eye, because of which they had to surgically remove her eyeball and the surrounding tissue, and what she's left with <coughs> is this cavity. She would need a very customized prosthetic, which would mimic the good side of her face. Do you know how this is done now? They actually make a plaster cast of the face and use that to manually build a prosthetic. Really uncomfortable for the patient, and it costs a lot and it takes a lot of time. This is just begging for automation or something that's <clears throat> more high tech. Why can't things be simple like in the movies? You know, like how Tom Cruise just rips off the mask of the bad guy and just makes a new one as required. This technology exists. It's called extremely advanced 3D printing. So we went to the greats of 3D printing and they agreed to support this project. We took an advanced 3D scanner and took a scan of this lady's face. Now with the d data in digital form, we were able to computationally sculpt <clears throat> the exact prosthetic that she would need with the <clears throat> confidence that it's going to fit pop properly and it's going to do its job. We went through a lot of trial and error. There were some hiccups. <laughs> and this is what we got. It fits perfectly. It looks exactly as supposed to. And if I hadn't told you that she needed this, <clears throat> you never know. <clears throat> this is a first globally. Okay? And if this technology is scaled, <clears throat> it's
it's going to make a huge impact because it's cheaper, takes less time, and this benefit is passed on to the patient. Right? So this is literally changing people's lives through technology. This is Dr. Chablani. He's a retina expert. Okay, and every day he sees patients who have diabetic retinopathy. Now, I'm sure a lot of us know someone who has diabetes, but what you do, may not know is that diabetes affects your vision. Diabetic retinopathy affects your retina, which is the back of the eye. This is an image of a healthy person's retina. You can see the blood vessels, you can see the optic disc, that's that shiny spot. This is an image of someone with diabetic retinopathy. You see those yellow dots? They actually block vision. And uh, this is a sort of effect that they have on a person's vision. Those patches that you see there, that's lost vision, permanent in some cases. So what Dr. Chablani said is, you know what, we need to catch these cases before things become so bad. Because you see, once someone actually says, I can't read anymore, I can't drive anymore, things are <clears throat> pretty bad, and then we lose vision forever. So we need a device by which we can catch these people early. It should be portable, lightweight, easy to use, but low cost was not a consideration because image quality is paramount if they are to diagnose a condition. So we can't compromise on that. So we brainstormed a bit and we came up with the open indirect ophthalmoscope. It's open in the sense that it's open source. Anyone, anywhere can use the designs and fabricate their own. We've tested on a lot of patients, again, in clinics in cities and in rural areas. And this is one of my favorite images. You see, if you look carefully, the two people in green, they are the highly trained, highly skilled clinicians. They're actually just standing at the back and observing. The two people in red, those are our interns. They didn't even know what diabetic retinopathy was before they joined us. And in just a few weeks, they built the device and they know how to use it. Also interesting to notice the conventional device they would be using for taking these images. It's lying on the table untouched. Just look at that device. It's, it's not very easy to use. It requires a lot of skill. <coughs> Our device is portable. It's handheld. Two kids are using it. Image quality is the same. All retina specialists we've spoken to say that this shows exactly what they want to diagnose these kind of vision-threatening conditions. And we were actually able to pick up a few patients who had diabetic retinopathy. You see those familiar little yellow dots? This guy had them. We also found something else that was really interesting. You see, we took this image on a patient, and it looks pretty healthy to us. But the optometrist with us said, no, no, call this guy back. I want to show you something. He then took an image with this device, and this is what we saw. See that huge white thing? The patient saw it, and he started freaking out. He said, oh my god, what's wrong with me? Am I going to lose my vision? <clears throat> Apparently, this is perfectly normal, but this person would not have vision in one corner of his visual field. He had gone like 30 years of his life not even knowing that he had this condition. And you see, that is the power of scaling these technologies and bringing down access and improving access to otherwise extremely complex diagnostic tools. It enables people to know more about the state of their health and make better decisions about it. And this is why we want to scale this technology in the rural network of LV Prasad Eye Institute. Because when those people get to know that such things exist and get to know that they may have these conditions, we can catch them early and we empower the vision technicians at the ground level to make those decisions then and there without them having to come all the way to Hyderabad for treatment. In 1999, the World Health Organization announced the Vision 2020 program by which the ambitious goal was set that by the year 2020, we put an end to preventable blindness. And I'm sure the seed we've sown of building these innovative devices is going to hasten our progress towards achieving that goal. Thank you very much for listening.